Very, very warm welcome. I haven't had one like that in ages. So uh, I'm going to be like a boss. Uh, is he here? He's here. I'm going to be walking up and down here as well since I've been sitting down all day. Um, I'm going to talk to you about how you can pay for all these services that you have been presented today. Um, because these guys are good, but they're expensive in some cases. Um, and uh, um, the thought of actually um, getting into these services, getting into these, these additional marketing or advertising um, services is it has to come from somewhere. We talked a lot about, uh, today we talked a lot about um, um, Sri Lanka as a destination. I want to talk to you um, as someone who can talk about profitability as a destination. So that's me, and funnily enough, I have a um, stranger name than all of you together. My name is Jerome. Um, this is what my company does. Uh, we consult, we help uh, hotels, um, restaurants, spas become profitable. Um, and we do that in a way which can be applied for every single industry. So who is working in the hotel industry here? Can you put your hands all the way up in the air? Oh my God, you're so tall, all of you. Um, okay, so who is working in the travel agent industry? Okay, who's working at Starbucks? There's one there. Who's been to a Starbucks? Who thinks Starbucks is absolutely fantastic? One, two. Who wants to own Starbucks? Ah, a few more there. That's what I mean. So change before you have to. This is what it's all about. This is a quote from Jack Welch. Does anybody know Jack Welch? There's one American who knows Jack Wells. Jack Wells is the founder of GE. Does anybody know GE? Right. GE started something called Six Sigma. Who's familiar with Six Sigma? Six Sigma is a process-driven methodology on how to improve sales, marketing, operations, in fact, everything you do, even in the, in, in the industry that we are in, the service industry. And I'm going to give you some examples at the end of this presentation about how we can change. But I also want to bring up a few issues and a few opportunities in the beginning. Now, the other day, I was sitting in the garden. Does anybody know what kind of animal this is? Snail, that's right. It's not an elephant. In Europe, we have a small version of the elephant. It's a snail. And I was sitting, just like this, in the garden, and I was thinking, where on earth is he going? And why is he going like that? And I also thought about, what is that slime behind him? But I, I didn't go too much into that. But um, I was thinking, does he actually have a goal? When you have your own business, do you have a goal? Do you follow it? Do you follow the strategy? This guy didn't. Maybe he did. Maybe it was a fly there, right in the middle, and he didn't want to go past it or over it, or I don't know what. So an evolution is needed. Why is it needed? Because of the mergers. One is buying the other. We heard it this morning. It goes real fast. Buyouts. It's all about the brand these days. When you are Belgium and you're going for the first time, you're going to Sri Lanka, what are you looking for? Security, safety, perhaps a bit of loyalty. And you look for a place that you recognize. I'm going to come back to that because it's affecting profitability. 
Success of independent hoteliers. We can see that. You know, there's so many new hotels, new hotel chains, uh, smaller hotel chains, boutique hotels. And you know what? They make a lot more money. I'll explain later why. Then generations. We've talked a lot about generations. Actually, we've talked about generations the entire morning. Um, and we're talking about millennials most of the time. But you know what? That's passé. Because in the hotel industry, before we have our mindset, before we have our actions and implementations ready, we're going to be five years ahead. That's not millennials anymore. And that's a total different, different client than we have now. Importance of health and wellness, also talked about that this morning. Um, locality, the importance of, of have that local feeling. And again, you know, we do that good or we do that well. In some situations, in some we really don't. Sri Lanka does not do a very good job right now because you have so much to give, so much to experience here. It's not really coming out. Um, experience we talked about, and experience is also something that's really interesting because experience is so individual. And, and some people said this morning, oh, maybe the travel agencies are disappearing. You know what? They're not. They will not, because people are looking for experiences, and they don't want to do everything themselves. That's great. Um, cuisine. You know, it started with all this, you know, me at, at KFC, me, uh, me at McDonald's, me at, you know, looking French fry in my ear, French fry in my mouth, French fry in my whatever. And now everybody's talking about cuisine. Now you can see cooking programs on television. Now you have to cook, and you have the local experience, food, all that kind of stuff. And then there's another issue, which is the increasing cost of labor and construction. Going to come back to that too. So quickly on the brand, and quickly on why independent hotels are profitable. All about the brand. The value of the brand is decreasing. Why? Because the choice is becoming bigger, and the people who talk about your brand is not just one or two people anymore, it's millions of people. Okay? So the significance of the brand is actually disappearing. Brand standards are made for hotels, not customers. How comfortable have you been on the seats here today? Does anybody have a really hard ass? Hmm? It's a brand standard because, you know, you need to have meeting room seats. Your butt needs to sit somewhere, but from a hotel perspective, they need to be stackable. Because, you know, as soon as you guys all leave, there's going to be dinner here tonight, and then all these chairs need to be stacked somewhere, so they need to be stackable. That is a standard. Is it comfortable for your ass? Not so sure. So brand stands for industry orthodoxies. You know, we've talked about a lot of data. You know, and in the coffee break, someone said, phew, there was a lot of data this afternoon. It was like, and then someone said, use data, do something with it. Indeed, data is individual. Data is not a standard. We cannot say, you know what? 25% of our room revenue should be housekeeping cost. Nonsense. Where does that come from? No idea. Another standard is, and I'm going to talk about that later on, because I want to bring to you a sour apple in the hotel industry, which is housekeeping. Um, housekeeping is, is something where you know, apart from branding and, 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 uh, and marketing in the hotels, the first thing that happens and where you decrease cost is in, in marketing, PR, housekeeping. You know, no more floor supervisors, blah, blah, blah. There's a few standards in there which are questionable. Um, then brands think global, not local. For about, probably yeah, four years ago, I was sitting with one of the largest hotel companies who had six people doing content marketing and connecting connecting at that time, um, with people who wanted to hear something or experience something in London. 
and they were sitting outside New York. And I'm thinking, how the hell do they know what, what's going on in London? They're not thinking local. And then there's the decreasing loyalty to brands that we already talked about. By the way, the new generations that we haven't really spoken about is increasing loyalty to brands, just so you know. And then this one I'm going to touch on very quickly because I see my ticker is going really fast. Um, but the great thing is this is the last session, so I actually I can talk as long as I want, right? There's nobody going to be hunting me down except for the Swiss guy here. Um, so the success of independent hotels, quick strategic and tactical decisions. You've seen that. If you have your own space, if you have your own property, if you have your own company, it's like that, bang. You do it. Increase of efficiency. You don't have to follow all the rules. You don't have to follow this system, go through that system. Reporting, we talked about uh, purchasing orders last night. You know, three copies, one to the accountant, one to whatever. You know, it's so much work. And increase folks in personnel. We talked about that today as well. We are still a service industry, right? That personality, that touch, is everybody's looking for it. When it's an independent hotel, easier, much easier. Creative freedom. You know what, I can do an event with the neighbors or I can do whatever, you know, much easier. There doesn't need to be. I actually remember one brand that I worked with, and it was an Irish brand, and, uh, and they wanted to do, uh, um, they followed the guidelines or the standards of the company, which was green. So every, all the material had to be green. So, and then they, they did a, um, a wedding brochure, which was green. I was like, would you get married when you get this folder at home, this is green? You know, and I called them up and I said, you know, I think we should have a picture of a wedding couple on the front, a ribbon around it. And they called back, like, you're so traditional. And I was like, you know what? A wedding is probably the most traditional thing in the world. Success. So boutique and independent hotels are unique. So, you know, what we see now is that they, they actually, you know, they're in prisons, they're in churches, they're in, they're adjust to the local area. Meatpack in New York is a very good example that started 12 or 12, 11 years ago. Um, and then investments are made very quickly. So we don't need to ask 55 owners, we don't, you know, all that kind of stuff. Is everybody with me still? In the back of the room still with me? You put your hands up? Is it fun now? After all this digital and data stuff, good. So we have cost as opposed to revenue. Four things I want to talk to you about. The four Ps are out. Does anybody know what the four Ps are? Can anybody say one of them? What? Oh, someone's been to hotel school over here. Is that, that's a Swiss guy again. <laughs> Seriously. So I'm going to talk about, um, the four Ps are out, I'm going to talk about the typical hotel organizational chart and I'm going to talk about innovation. And innovation, I'm going to talk about how you can think differently. And I'm giving you an example, but I want you to think like, oh, maybe I can use this, te you know, this technique for my own company or for whatever organization you're in. Okay? So the first part is boring, there's a little data in there, okay? Are we ready for that? So labor cost is the largest cost for hotels. F&B, which is food and beverage, in case the travel agents are not aware of it or whoever is not aware of it. And housekeeping top the charts. Operating costs are on the increase. And that's because of training, that's because of social services, that's because of the extremely large turnover, and it's because the hotels are not very good at paying good salaries. And when you pay peanuts, you get monkeys. Now, over the last 10 years, of all the projects that Mochino has done, and that's big brands, mid-sized brands, as well as independent hotels, and this is something that I want you to look at and remember extremely well. Over 
of incremental profits have come out of marketing, out of revenue increases. And we talked about these costs. We talked about housekeeping, for example. Housekeeping is the first area where, where costs are cut. However, if you make $8 more per room, you can actually have about 12% of your inventory, your people, on, a, you know, on your payroll. And that's quite a lot. So over here is a, another expense, you know, total labor cost. This is 2015. Um, cost of sales, management fees, operating expenses, and then again, the labor costs right up there. Okay? The reason I want, you to, want to show you this is because I'm going to talk a little bit about the example after this. The four P's of marketing are out. Absolutely, they are. And there's a few in here that I'm going to talk about. All this digital strategy is fantastic. It's amazing. Right? But do you just want to communicate with yourself? Or do you want to communicate with someone? Is there a two-way connection? So if you connect with a website, if you connect with a brand online, do you get feedback? Do you hear something? Do you talk to them? Very important. Content marketing. You know, we've seen a not-so-great website early on. I can give you probably about 90 to 95 of the websites that I see of hotel companies are absolutely useless. Useless. And then they're wondering, why can I not get this? Or why can I not get this? And why can I not get that? Why cannot? Just one question to ask. Could be your business. What market segment are you looking for? What do you need in your hotel? Who do you want to stay at your property? Then you start thinking about website, booking. Interaction. Another big thing that I'm going to talk about is influencer marketing, but I'm going to keep that to a little later. The use of the brand name. You know, the use of the brand name is great because, you know, we've said already that you have a connection. You want to, from here, you want to fly Sri Lankan. That's it. Um, and you do that because of loyalty. You do that because of all kinds of reasons. However, a brand is not so extremely exciting anymore because you know when you step into a Hilton room in New York and you fly to Paris the next day you stay at the Hilton Paris you might as well be in Sri Lanka the room looks exactly the same the greeting is exactly the same except one is in French not so exciting really New type of tourism. We've talked a little bit about this wellness. We've talked a little bit about um, different geographical um, market segments. China, for example. Now, do you want to stay as a guest in one hotel that has 90% tour operator business and 10% individual as an individual traveler? I doubt that. Because as an individual traveler, you expect personal service. You don't expect 20 plates on a, on, a, on a stack in a restaurant, right? You don't expect people to roll suitcases through the restaurant because they need to hurry up for the bus. Then there's the mobile online needs. And then there's gallery and video. The pictures, I'm going to show you some examples. I have seven minutes, so I need to be a bit quicker. Going back to influencer marketing. You know what influencer marketing is? You. All of you. Not people who like your picture. Not people who think that you're amazing and fantastic. Maybe your grandmother. That always works. It's people that you influence. People that you talk to 
and have a communication with and say, you know what, you need to go to Sri Lanka, it's amazing. It's such a great place. Where did you stay? Well, we stayed there. Why did you stay there? Well, because of this, this, and that. Picking the right person or picking the right strategy, the right marketing strategy, you know what? Over 40% of companies, corporate companies and hotel companies are not happy, not happy with their advertising or marketing agency. And that's because there's a shift. Because these guys can no longer do what one or two people with a selfie can do. But again, how do we get these people into one bracket and understand, you know what, this person, this influencer, can actually go there and there and there and target exactly that market segment that we want, okay? Gallery and video. So here's one. Reality counts. Now, I don't, I'm not sure. Is this a beach destination, do you think? Sri Lanka? Maybe not. Maybe a little bit, huh? Well, I'm going to show you some, uh, some pictures real quick. Who wants to stay here? Hands up. One person? Two. Three, uh, four, five. Uh, the Swiss guy, of course. <laughs> <laughs> this is what it really looks like. So on the left, you saw the picture on the website. On the right is reality. Okay? I have another one for you. Who wants to stay here? Cocktails, the whole shebang. That's what it looks like. One more for you. Beautiful beach in the Caribbean. Who wants to stay there? Next to all the Germans. Huh? Sorry, there's two Germans here. Too. Oh, sorry. Ouch. Okay, my rating has just gone down dramatically. <laughs> So another, um, just you know, giving you an example of the four Ps, right? Reality counts. People don't want lies. People want reality. They want to make communication. They want to know exactly what they can expect. No more rubbish. OK, I have four more minutes. Two examples. Do you know what this is? Can you read it? This is basically what every hotel that I work with looks like. Almost every hotel, except for the ones I've been to and I have changed. This is what it looks like. GM, F&B manager, housekeeping, Boba, Bob, Charlie, John. Okay? Do you think that works? How does it work in other industries? Like this. See what this means? In a process or unit, take F&B. Food and beverage. Restaurants in hotels are boring and they're not doing well. Why? Because of a number of things. First of all, they don't have their own unit. They don't have their own management. There's a guy running it, and he also has to do room service, he also has to do that, he also has to fill up the mini bars, he has to speak to housekeeping, sit in executive meetings. <sighs> Seriously? How about changing that into a unit? It's own marketing person who sits on Instagram, or his own um, finance guy who says, you know what, your cost last night sucked, instead of this monthly, like, oh, overall it was 40%. How good? You were good. Well, actually, no, we just shifted from last month to this month. That's innovation. It works in every other industry. Every company in GE does it this way. Process. So even when it's a chip and you're functional as a part of a chain, you have to sell it to the next part. And if you can sell it there, you can also sell it to another company. Last example, I have two more minutes and seven seconds. 
Innovation housekeeping. This is my last example. Um, and the reason I bring this up is because I love housekeeping and I think it's an area which is extremely um, important to a hotel because we see these guys that come into our personal space when we stay there and we treat them like shit. KPI. A housekeeper should clean the room in 30 minutes. Who thought that up? Bob? Why? Seriously? Why? I don't know. So this is a hotel, two hotels in Rome that I went to. They had problems in housekeeping. In fact, 12% of the housekeeping staff hadn't been there for 10 years, and they're still on the payroll. Interesting. High sick leave, extremely high sick leave. Hard work, labor, back. That was a problem. High sick leave we had to solve, and we had to solve the satisfaction of the people working there. So we started defining this. You know, we started looking at, okay, what, first of all, you know, what's going on there? What can we test? So we started analyzing who's been sick, why? What have they been doing? Have they been working? Have they been you know, cleaning too many rooms in one day? What is the issue? We didn't really find out. We just found out that housekeeping sucks. And I have to clean 30, uh, in 30 minutes I have to clean the room. That's it. We started measuring. So we collected data, talked to people, talked to people in housekeeping, talked in, to people in finance, Talk to people that have been working there for 25 years and three years. Okay? Same issues. Too hard work, can't do this, you know, my back hurts, you know, all that kind of stuff. Okay. We're going to test a few things. We're going to clean a room with 17 people. Have you ever tried to clean a room with 17 people? It's a lot of fun. We um, weren't successful in that test, in that pilot. But the reason we tried this is because we wanted to be efficient. We wanted to be fast and we wanted it to be fun. Okay? So when we did this exercise, it turned out that to clean a room in two and a half minutes with five people was very efficient. These guys could go from place to place. So as soon as there was a checkout, this group went there, 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 all over the hotel, okay? And it was amazing. What do you think happened to the satisfaction? You know how much fun it was to clean a room with five people? We changed our rule every, every week, in fact. So a boss, in week one could be the boss in week two. The person cleaning the beds could be cleaning the bathroom the next week. And everybody had their role. So much fun. And when we started meeting them, they were really bored. So they started chatting with each other, and went coffee breaks, and we paid them for it. But our efficiency increased dramatically. We didn't have to have supervisors any longer because they were supervising each other. We didn't have to have floor supervisors. We didn't have to, to go to the next level. And when we started improving, just like wearing glasses, we also found out that they were so excited, and someone came up with a suggestion. You know what? Housekeeping is, can, is, can actually make money. So the laundry department, instead of cleaning everything for the hotel, they also started cleaning shirts and suits for offices that are in the area so they could make money in the times where it was slow. And then we control it. Happy people, right? Happy housekeepers. So that's my wish for you for today, is bring this change home. Think about it differently. Use this methodology. Buy my book. I, seriously, I don't make money on the book. It's fine. Um, 
But what I want you to think about is, if I have this process, if I use this, turn it around. You know, skip all this. You know, it has to be like that. It has to be like that. Forget it. There's so much opportunity in sales, in revenue, and also in costs. Thank you.